Okie dokie. Hey everyone. I don't know why I just said that. I hate saying okie dokie. But anyways, <laughs> hi everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Mission Impact. And today we're going to be talking about workflow management. So you can see our running theme for this month, right? We're talking about basically just managing your business because that's what it's about. If you don't have effective management skills in your business, your business is not going to be successful. So just to kind of run down what we've talked about so far, in the first episode for this month, we talked about effective leadership and how an effective leader can actually operate to optimize their business skills, right? And make sure that their business is going to be successful. Then we talked about developing profitable programs because as a social enterprise or nonprofit organization, the pay or the profit is in the programs. And if you don't have um, profitable programs, and you don't have effective programs, right? Um, and you can go look, look at that video to really see what an effective program looks like. Um, you're not going to be able to attract the type of funders that you need to help to subsidize the cost of running these programs. So today we're going to talk about workflow management and workflow management works right into all of that because you can't be an effective leader or have an effect, a profitable program if you don't you're not able to stagger your work. So you're not like Ty in the beginning who said, girl, I'm so tired because I got all this work to do, right? Um, or like myself, who sometimes sit right here at my desk and I'm like, my head is down on the desk because I'm just totally, um, you know, just out of it because I have so much work. And I was one of those people who was also guilty of not wanting to delegate, not trusting other people to do the work as effectively as me. So I'm getting into it, but um, I'll retract and then let's introduce ourselves and then we can really get into it. Um, my name is Tracy V. Allen. I am the owner of TVA Consulting Group. I have over 20 years of experience in the social impact um, arena or the industry, however you want to put it. Um, I help social entrepreneurs and um, small businesses and social enterprise enterprises to design, build, and fund their social venture while maximizing their social impact in the community. And I am Daphne Pettis. I am a nonprofit um, strategist and social strategist, S-O-U-C-H-I-A-L uh, strategist, uh, working with nonprofit founders and leaders slash executive directors um, with helping them uh, in the position that they are in so that they are able to effectively um, contribute in the role of nonprofit founder, uh, visionary, and or executive director. Hey y'all, I'm Ty Boone. I'm owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. Um, I also have about 20, a little bit more than 20 years of experience working with nonprofit organizations. I help nonprofits move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. And y'all know what? Some of that struggle is because we don't have systems in place, right? We don't have a workflow. It doesn't have to be a struggle. It doesn't have to be. That really does not have to be. I, you know, Tracy, you mentioned me when we started this because I'm, you know, I'm like, look, girl, delegation was was a hard thing. It's baby steps out here. You don't you carry it me too fast. It's it's baby steps, um, especially when you're in a leadership position and you're and you're feeling like you know, everything is your responsibility. And you, that's kind of like the first feeling that you have um, in leadership. If you're going to, if you want to be a good leader, you're like, okay, I have to look out for this person. I got to look out for this program. I got to look out for that. You, this, and then you're like, okay, well, who's better to, 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 to make sure this happens than me? Cause I'm top boom, right? So, <laughs> so let me do this, but you are 100% correct. When you start to delegate and you delegate to the right people, it's, it's like a like night and day, like a total, complete different thing. I remember directing the department and I came into this department and I was kind of really trying to prove myself to the organization, you know, as a whole. And I'm like, okay, I got this. You know, this is Ty Boone. I got this. I had about six or seven staff members under me. And when I got there, I actually wrote an article about this and like shared the channel or something. Um, when I got there, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do all of this because nobody can do it like me. So I'm going to do all this stuff. Maybe three or four months in, I was so burned out, Tracy. I was so, I, only three, four months in. I was so burned out, so exhausted. I was like, I am going to die and I'm going to quit this job on my way to my death. 
right? Like this, like this is what was happening. And I sat down. I was like, Ty, you hired these people. Like you, like you hired five to seven people who are working for you right now. So tell me why are you doing all of this work and you're not giving it to them to do? So I had to sit down and think about this. I went back to their resumes, Tracy, and I'm like, okay, this is why I hired that person because they're strong right here. This is why I hired that person because they're strong right there. And I looked at what my my duties were and what my stack of stuff were on my desk. I'm like, I'm doing like 86% of what it is. I hired them. I help them be over here chilling, drinking my Coca-Cola and surfing the internet. But I'm over here doing this. Um, so, I, you know, we I, I called my staff back up and I'm like, hey, we're going to split this up. You won't be the one who go over here and talks to the mayor because you do that kind of work. I'm going to be over here. I'm going to sit back here and I'm going to write these grants because I'm an introvert. I don't like to talk people anyway. Let me sit back here and, and work my magic because, and, and especially if you're an introvert and we're probably all are, I don't know. Um, but when you're, when you're doing things that are really outside of your, your lane, you get tired so quickly. So a lot of that, you know, when I say I'm tired, it's because I'm, I'm trying to stretch outside of that and not really finding, oh, you can work your mojo right here doing this thing because this is where your, your energy comes from and you're not so exhausted. So if you take me out of my, you know, you take me out here, you put me into, in front of these people seven days a week and I have to be around them all day. I can talk about nonprofits because that's what I like. But if you put me into some other situation where I'm really not supposed to fit in, when I get home, I'm dead for a whole week. I'm like, look, I'm like, look, I can't talk to nobody. Work, workflow. We ain't got no workflow. I'm behind. We're, we're, cause, cause I'm tired and I'm having, my body's having to catch up with my brain because of putting out that energy where I probably should have reserved it and took it to where I do my best work and sent somebody else to do that other thing that took me to that, to that point of breaking. Yeah. So yeah, I think Ty hit something right on the head with the, you know, the whole breaking point. You know, I think that um, uh, those processes and um, effective processes and uh, systems actually allow us to get to the point to where we don't get to that breaking point. So, you know, tr transparency moment here. Um, one of the things that I dealt with was not being able, I didn't trust people to actually work the, uh, the nonprofit that I had started, right? So it was mine, it was my baby. And, you know, why would I, you know, allow any people, you know, my board was not effective, you know, at first. And then um, I found myself, I had hired people because I was giving grant money to hire people. So I hired them. And, um, but crazy thing was I was still working everything, you know, so here it is that I'm paying these people to, um, to, to, you know, to work these positions. And, you know, my board um, was, was my board, but I wasn't allowing them to do anything. So, okay. So here it is. I'm working what the board was supposed to be doing and I'm doing what the staff was supposed to be doing and I'm working my position. And guess what happened? I ended up in the hospital stressed out. You know, I ended up, <clears throat> my body had shut down and I ended up in the hospital. And that was one of the ways that I, um, I realized that I had an autoimmune disease because as we know, you know, stress actually triggers autoimmune diseases. And so here it is that I had stressed myself to the point to where I had an autoimmune uh, flare up. So, you know, um, so like you say, you know, that was my breaking point. So one of the things that I always talk about uh, with nonprofit uh, founders and visionaries is that one of the things that you have to get away from is that loner uh, uh, type mentality that you can do it all and that you should be doing it all. And one, and one of the ways that you do that is put those uh, effective processes and work um, procedures and systems in place that uh, allow you to do that. <clears throat> so. Absolutely. So you guys both talked about, you know, nonprofits, but for business owners too, because we're all business owners, right? So business owners and social enterprises, whether you're a small business or a social enterprise, which is a small business, um, you still need to have systems and processes in place. Just like Daphne, I kept pushing myself and pushing myself while I was teaching and work on uh, having my business part time because, you know, you just want I call it killing the money. You just want to you want to get at this money. Right. And you think that you're superwoman, you're young, you're energetic, whatever. And I pushed myself to the point that I activated a <laughs> autoimmune disease several 
autoimmune diseases all at the same time, where I was literally disabled for about a year, a year and a half, right? And in a, a span of like, what is it? Eight years, I had about 11 surgeries. Okay, so you can really stress yourself out if you don't have systems and processes in place. And it goes to what we're going to be talking about next, which is hiring and retaining good staff. Systems and processes can come in the form of apps and software, but it also comes in the form of staff. And Ty kind of spoke to that. You hire these people. The fact is you went through an interview, you looked at their resume, you talked to them and you decided that they were competent to be hired and paid to do a job. Now you have to trust in them again that they're going to do that job effectively. Give them the work to do. Take things off your table. Um, I know Ty talked about it at one point in time and I was like, we joke a lot of times and say that we're actually twins from you know different families. But <laughs> one of the things that she did put on social media and I was like, this girl is really like my, you know, my spiritual twin because she talked about putting um, time on her calendar for herself. And I legit have been doing that for a couple of years because if I don't, guess what? I will sit at this desk from the time I get up and usually I get up at four o'clock in the morning until about four o'clock in the afternoon. And if I go to the bathroom, that's good. So sometimes I even try to limit my water intake so I don't have to keep getting up and going to the bathroom. Again, that's putting stress on my body because you're not supposed to be sitting for so long. You shouldn't be watching the screen for so long. None of that stuff. So I had to develop a system. That's what we always talk about, right? Systems and processes, right? Systems and processes help you to be um, productive and efficient at whatever it is you're doing. So because I know myself, and that's one of the things I think that um, goes into workflow management that a lot of people are not taking, co being cognizant of who they are. You really have to be honest with yourself at who you are and what you're good at, what you're not good at, how long it takes you to do something, how long it won't take you to do something. Do you have the capacity to do things? And because I know myself well, and I know I would sit here for hours and hours and hours, and then I'd be like, oh my God, I have a migraine headache and I can't see nothing, right? Um, I started scheduling in time for me. I literally schedule a lunch break so that I can actually eat food, right? Because otherwise, sometimes I go the whole day and I don't eat anything. So developing those really work processes, which include you, right? Because if you worked at a regular job, you would get your 15 minute breaks, you would get your lunch break. You need to treat your business like completely overall like a business. Have systems and processes in place that make your workflow easier. People know what they have to do when they have to do it without you having to keep sending little emails or sticky pads or whatever it is. So one of the things that we use so I can give you an actionable step to walk away with, um, Ty and I both use ClickUp. We use ClickUp in, in conjunction with Zapier and I use Slack. I don't know if Ty used Slack, but I use Slack as well. And these systems work together cohesively to manage the project. So I'm not constantly having to say, um, Susan, for instance, you have X, Y, Z to do, or, you know, John, you have X, Y, Z to do. The thing goes automatically into the system. The system spits out who's supposed to do what, whatever, and everybody knows what they're supposed to do, when it's due, and how to get it done. So having real workflow processes in place can make everybody's life easier and just kind of make sure that everything is done when it needs to be done in a timely manner. You know, I'm such a nerd because, you know, when... When Calendly added the workflow where there where you can schedule your appointments and then they can mm -hmm. they, they, you can send uh, automatic emails to the people who signed up signed up to schedule, I was like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever, right? Even mm -hmm. when, especially when you're when, when you're working by yourself and you got to follow up with people, um, even having your team if you have someone on your team um, to do follow ups, having the same message that goes out to the you know for someone in the same service need. Having that, right. that consistency in messaging that helps. So having these automations in your workflow where the email is already created that goes out to the client or you're doing something, mm -hmm. like, you know, like job form or like Calendly where they are going to the calendar themselves and they're scheduling. They automatically mm -hmm. get a reminder that it's there. So if they miss the appointment, that's on them, right? They don't have right. to call your, your, your staff member because, look, you booked the appointment. I didn't book the appointment. You said you were <laughs> like, I didn't say you were, you know? Whatever, yep. having people to pay you in the calendar, right? Uh -huh, okay. uh -huh. Those kind of things that make life 
so much easier. And then having it, you know, having the processes written down. Tracy, yesterday you talked you talked about a procedures manual yesterday. Um, I think yeah. yesterday. Um, we talked about mm -hmm. that, but. Just going right along with this, even those mm -hmm. little automations that we think are easy, having it written down and having a guide for the next person. And, you know, in our businesses, we always talk about and teach sustainability. Yes. And sometimes we're like, it stops right here with me, with Ty, right? Because it's like, okay, <laughs> this is it. So what is what does sustainability look like for my bit for my for-profit business? What does sustainability mm -hmm. look like for your nonprofit business? If if you or your assistant or me or my team decide we all want to take vacation the same day and nobody thought about it, right? Uh -huh. What happens? Uh -huh. What happens <laughs> to the people that you serve? And uh, I see this a lot with nonprofits, y'all, because that lone leader, Daphne, they just do everything. They run the whole show, and if they go on vacation for two weeks, nothing happens in the organization for the whole two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be honest, that's all of us at one yeah. point in time, right? Yes. So right. as we're growing in our businesses, we know we can't continue to operate like that. We so we do that as systems and processes. If I have a sick day, business continues. If I need to go on vacation, business continues. Because mm -hmm. the staff understands what their jobs are and the, the system is running that portion. But like you said, Ty, perfectly the procedure manual picks up where everything left yeah, off, it up right? What to do, right? You know, I, I mm -hmm. keep going through where somebody needed something really badly, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, but the CEO is not here, so we can't take you to the doctor today. Like, what, mm -hmm. what is that? Yeah. Because I, I need your service, whether if you're out of town or not, I still need to go to the doctor. You said you take me mm -hmm. to the doctor. You know? Yeah. I think that was one of the, that was one of the most valuable things that I did uh, when I when I uh, started to run a nonprofit organization was to put those systems in place, uh, those mm -hmm. policies, those policy and policies and procedure manuals. You know those things that you know you don't plan to get sick, and you know God forbid that something happens and that you're mm -hmm. not able to be there. What happens? You know the show mm -hmm. must go on, right? You know. Um, it, it, you know, as we say on Broadway, there's an understudy, right? So, you know, your policies and procedures and processes or your understudy, if you can't make it or you can't be there, those things are there to help you continue to go on. And that is the overall goal of your not other nonprofit or for the business. You know, you want it to continue even if you're not there. Yeah, I think I'm going to steal that. That's I'm perfectly correct. It's your understudy. I like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think that's it. We kind of basically gave you a good rundown on workflow management and why it's so important to the other two things that we talked about. <clears throat> and most of all, why it's going to be important to the topic that we're going to discuss next week, right? Which is hiring and retaining the people who are going to help you um, have a good workflow management, the people who are going to help you to be an effective leader, the people who are going to help you to develop those um, programs that are going to be profitable and impactful to your community. So until next week, everyone, um, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want to contact any of us, the um, information is in the description below. Bye.